This video released by the Pentagon shows a raid on the compound of the Islamic State's ideological leader and founder Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. It resulted in his death and marked one of the biggest defeats for the militant group known as ISIS. He died after running into a dead-end tunnel, whimpering and crying and screaming all the way. His successor was announced just days later. That was not the first major loss ISIS had suffered. This is all ISIS. Now on the bottom, that's as of today. This is ISIS, there's none. The caliphate is gone as of tonight. That was a massive setback for the physical caliphate that had for years spread its brutal regime of terror across large areas of Iraq and Syria. But as officials at the time warned, that Thank wasn't you, the Bob, end of the day. militant group. Uh, this is not the end of the fight against ISIS. ISIS still lives on in various cells and in the minds of many of the people uh, in the areas that we've liberated. What that victory did not do was destroy ISIS as a military force. Jennifer Caffarella is a Syria and ISIS specialist and one of the authors of ISIS's second comeback. It's an assessment that uses declassified information and research to develop a picture of the next ISIS resurgence. ISIS had already dispersed into populated areas as well as ungoverned spaces like the Syrian desert in central Syria to regroup and return to an offensive campaign as an insurgency. Following the defeat of the physical caliphate was a string of attacks. Several in Afghanistan, including one on a government building that killed seven. But the biggest of the attacks was the so-called Easter bombings in Sri Lanka, where a series of blasts killed more than 300 people. Just a few days after that, there was a call from its now deceased leader to redouble efforts and further the extremist group's cause around the world. So we saw um, several messages from Baghdadi and others really urging people to continue, promising the return of some form of the Islamic State. We started hearing about attacks being inspired. We heard about funding going to places like Afghanistan to sort of expand the caliphate in that way. But as the group continued to spread its ideology globally, a decision by President Trump to pull US forces out of Syria shocked the region, intensifying the fear of a physical ISIS resurgence. The worst thing any commander in chief can do to the soldiers is to give back to the enemy land taken through blood and sacrifice. As the US left, Turkey and Turkish backed forces advanced into Syria, seizing territory held by Kurdish forces those same Kurdish forces guarding some prison camps and detention centers holding ISIS prisoners and family members linked to Islamic State. According to Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF, there are just over 12,000 ISIS fighters in detention, including more than 2,000 foreign fighters. And estimates from US forces on the ground say there are tens of thousands of ISIS family members scattered across internally displaced people camps, or IDPs. What you can see here in red are facilities from which ISIS has succeeded or attempted to break out family members and fighters from prisons. Now, those breakouts thus far are not highly coordinated. So we're talking about riots and small levels of ISIS members paying bribes essentially to guards so that they can escape um, or be smuggled out of these facilities. While Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan assured Trump he would secure the prisons inside the proposed safe zone, some of the most important ones are located outside of that. And it's not just the prisons under threat. The instability in Syria is a major concern for neighboring Iraq. On both sides, in Syria here and on the Iraqi side, this is ungoverned desert. Now, there are small pockets of the border, essentially, that the Iraqis are securing, but the rest of this is essentially desert and therefore ISIS can traverse it. There are also concerns that the other players in the region involved don't have any interest in keeping ISIS at bay. The US withdrawal from Northeast Syria creates a security vacuum, and multiple actors are now going to compete with military force to fill that vacuum. All of the other actors in this region are fighting in Syria for different goals that they prioritize far and above beyond the threat from ISIS. And frankly, that includes the Kurds. We've accelerated basically the disintegration of the unity of effort against ISIS that only the United States was able to create. 
But how concerned should we be with these threats? And what might an ISIS resurgence look like? What one has to watch for is how they sort of try to reconstitute or rebuild or rebrand themselves in a way such that they have learned from those lessons and are able to endure longer as a caliphate than they were the first time. I don't have the imagination to tell you how that's going to go, but that ideology remains a powerful one and one that inspires a lot of people and one that is expansive and worldwide. The global ISIS expansion has included adding new formal provinces to the ISIS structure. We have seen a redoubling of that ISIS effort to expand in Northern Africa and now an expansion farther south to the DRC and other Central African states. We've simultaneously seen an expansion in the East Asia regions. ISIS has had a province in Afghanistan since early in the caliphate, but has now expanded to include a separate province in Pakistan and a separate province in India. These ISIS provinces are in addition to what ISIS calls the East Asia province based in the Philippines where ISIS had achieved a major success in 2017, seizing the provincial capital of Marawi and defending it against the Philippine security forces for a number of weeks. We've never had a terror group resurrect itself in the same form. These groups have a way of metastasizing and reconstituting themselves in ways that perhaps we don't always have the imagination to foresee. They still have millions of dollars in revenue, not nearly to the levels that they did at their peak. When we think about the future of ISIS, I think it's really important to, to not be confined to that box of thinking of what it was in 2014, 2015, 2016, or to think of collapse strictly in the form of the physical caliphate, because that virtual caliphate is as important and arguably will be key to however it reconstitutes itself if it's able to.